Hello grade 9 math class, welcome back to another lecture. We have lesson 2 here today where we're going to be multiplying and dividing integers. Essentially we're just going to be adding a few negatives into our multiplication and division problems. We're going to be working on reducing fractions uh, and just kind of overall refreshing ourselves with the rule. Uh, the rule when we're multiplying or dividing negative numbers is that uh, if they're the same sign the uh, answer is going to be positive, and if they are opposite signs, the answer is going to be negative. If that uh, is familiar, that's great. If not, let's jump into a problem and get started. Okay, let's see. We have first minus 26 divided by minus 13. You may see it written like this. Ooh, I'll shift down just a little. You may see it written like this. You could also see it written how I often prefer to write it as minus 26 over minus 13. Uh, you should be able to recognize here that 26 divided by 13 is 2. Uh, 13 goes into 26 twice. Uh, you could do some long division, but that would require the same uh, thought. Right, we are, there's nothing to really to add to it other than 13 goes into 26 twice. So that is two. The an the answer though should be positive or negative. That's the question. Uh, they are both the same sign. They're both negative, and a negative times a negative means that the answer is positive. So this is just two. That's it. Negative 26 divided by negative 13 is two. They're both negative, so our answer is positive. Let's go just to the right on our question sheet. We have seven divided by 35. Again, we'll note that their signs are the same, so our answer is going to be positive. Let's write this as a fraction. Seven, 35, well, I can't divide 35 into seven, right? This is going to be a decimal. So let's see if we can reduce this fraction to make it something easier to work with. Um, I know that seven goes into seven, obviously once. But seven also goes into 35, five times, no. How many times, does seven go into 35? Sure does, five times, yes, that's right. Uh, you know, sometimes you just make a mistake and you catch yourself. But that means that if I divide both of these by seven, I would end up with one fifth. And you can probably remember, uh, this is totally fine to keep your answer this way, a reduced fraction form but 0.2 is the decimal that represents that fraction. Uh, let's continue. We have 30, 10 times 37. All right. 10 times 37. Uh, they're both positive, so our answer is going to be positive. And when I have 10 times something, I'm just gonna move the decimal place over one to the right. So this is 370, and again, it's a positive number because they're both positive to begin with 10 and 37. Let's do the next problem minus 4 divided by 8. So in this one we have opposite signs and that means when we have opposite signs we're going to end up with a negative answer. Let's just keep that in mind. We will turn this into a fraction as I believe it really should be written. Negative 4 divided by 8 um, I can't divide 8 into 4, that's why we're here. So we are going to reduce this fraction as much as we can. Uh, if I divide 4 into both of them, I would end up with 1 over 2. So you can write this fraction a couple of different ways. Uh, this would be an acceptable way to write the fraction with the negative in the 1. That means that this fraction is negative. Um, that is totally acceptable. And you could also write it like this, where the fraction is out, or the negative is outside the whole fraction, representing that it's all negative. Something that is not okay would be this. That is not okay. Uh, I cannot have a negative on both of them. So I'm going to put a big X through that. Uh, that is not allowed. Either of these are totally fine, but this one is not. Let's continue to another problem. 42 divided by 40, negative 42 divided by 40. Let's turn that into a fraction immediately, negative 42 over 40. Again, one is positive, one is negative, so they're going to be a negative answer. Um, 
40 goes into 42, it's going to be once. Uh, I know it's going to be one point something, but let's reduce this a little bit and see what we can get. Uh, divide both of them by two because they're even. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, 42 divided by two would be 21. So this is negative 21 over 20. 40 divided by two is 20. Um, so that would be perfectly acceptable as our answer, as would be negative 21 out of 40. And if you're looking for a decimal, um, I know that this goes into this once, and then there would be 1 20th left over. So that is 0 0.05. 1 20th, I know, is the same as 0 0.05. So we would be having negative 1.05. That would be our answer. All right, let's do the last one. This one is quick. All right, we have 0 divided by 2. Uh, we turn that into our fraction. 2 cannot go into um, 0. It will never fit into 0. There is no way it ever will. So whenever you have 0 over something, the answer is just 0. It's not positive or negative. Um, the answer is just nothing. 0 divided by 2. Uh, in the same vein, I know you don't have this one on your sheet, but let's do it anyway while we're here. Um, if you ever have anything, let's say 7 divided by 0, uh, 0 goes into 7 an infinite number of times, right? If you can keep putting 0 into 7 over and over and over and over again, and it will never fill up. You can never reach that limit. So we call anything with zero in the denominator, we call that infinity. And you're not going to encounter that too, too much. Uh, you might also see it on your calculator as undefined. Let's do a quick trial on my calculator, see what it says. Seven divided by zero, it might say error, it does say error. Essentially, we just, it goes into it an infinite number of times. So this is infinity. And it could also be undefined or error. But just so you know, um, anything with zero on the top is zero, and anything with zero on the bottom is undefined. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I'll see you soon.